Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how I turned a blank blender scene into a final rendered animation that I use for my short film Nowhere as quickly and as simply as possible. So let's get straight into it. Firstly, I started off by looking for inspiration and reference. Normally I do this on either Pinterest or ArtStation, but this time I ended up on a website called Frameset, which has just got a bunch of pictures from short films, advertisements, whatever. So I just looked up gas station and I found this really nice picture and immediately I was hooked. The picture just told a story to me. It looked low lonely and isolated and so I just wanted to get straight away creating it in Blender. So before I could start procrastinating, I jumped in Blender and started moving some basic shapes around. I began with the roof and the poles and then I started adding in the gas pump and at this point, as I said, it's just simple shapes primitives with loop cuts, extruding, scaling, whatever. I'm just trying to get a basic idea of how the scene will look and lay out like the building blocks for the foundation of this scene. Medium and small details can wait for a bit later. Anyways, the pole and the roof and all of that I had settled within the first couple of hours because it's very simple shapes. So then it was on to finalizing this gas pump and making that look good because I knew that was the focus of the scene. So I had to make sure it looked as realistic as possible. So after trying many times and doing many iterations of the gas pump, I managed to get it looking right after I imported another gas station model, which was a free one from Sketchfab and using that as reference for making my own gas pump. So after the gas pumps, base shape was correct. I moved on to the fuel handle and the fuel hose. The fuel handle was just a subdivided cube that I moved vertices around to match a reference in the background. So pretty simple there, nothing fancy. The fuel hose was just a curve that I converted to mesh with some extra subdivisions to make it look uh, nicer. Then I made those bins that you see in the corner, um, which is just a cube with some boolean and some subdivision and bevels. Then I created a broom and a squeegee brush, which I created using some super simple modeling techniques and a UV project method with a basic image off Google. I have a video about this. Um, go check it out after finishing this one. Next, I started adding the medium and small details to the gas pump. It took quite a bit of time to get all these panels right. The uh, knife tool, just K in edit mode, it was a lifesaver here. It meant I could draw whatever shapes I needed to, extrude that in and out. So yeah, that was basically all of the medium and small details done. Then I went through and um, beveled everything, uh, just doing it manually without modifiers because then I had more control. But yeah, you basically just bevel everything to make sure there's no sharp edges. So yeah, that was basically all the modeling. I went through it pretty quick here, but in reality, it was just a lot of time trying one thing for the gas pump and realizing it was the wrong way to do it. And so just restarting. And so after a couple of tries, I had the way to do it nailed down. And then it was just time of adding in the smaller details. But yeah, nothing too complicated modeling here. So we'll move on to texturing. But before we get into texturing, I just wanted to give you guys a little tip on UV unwrapping. Because of course, with texturing, we need to have good UVs. And the way I do it now is I just go into edit mode, hit A to select everything, go U, cube projection and this unwraps nearly 99.9% .9 of objects like perfectly and I don't have to do anything else. So yeah, I'd recommend using cube projection nearly all the time. So for texturing, I wanted to start off by creating a concrete material because from my reference, I could tell a lot of my objects were made out of the same kind of looking material. Jumping straight into it, I grabbed a nice concrete base image off of my collection of textures.com pictures. Um, unfortunately, textures.com doesn't give you 15 free credits anymore, but if you're willing to pay the 11 or $12 a month, it does give you a huge selection of images, which are super helpful. Anyways, I grabbed one of them and then I used this technique called layered texturing, where I basically grabbed some pictures of grunge, also from textures.com, and I layered that on top of my base one by using the mix RGB node and changing the uh, blending mode to multiply, overlay, or screen, whatever worked. And so doing this a couple of times with some color ramps gives you a really nice result really quickly. And if you wanna learn more about layered texturing, check out my Patreon, because I've got a full video on it there. So now that I had that nice concrete material, I just copied and pasted that onto most of my other objects, onto the pole, the flag, the roof, and uh, actually onto some parts of the gas pump. Of course, for each material, I went in, changed some things, the UV map was different, changed some colors, but yeah, it ended up looking pretty nice and not like it was the same material. And uh, next, I uh, just started texturing the other objects, like the plastic for the bins, the fuel hose, uh, more layered texturing, or just some basic stuff, because most of it 
you won't really see up close to at all. So with all my textures done, all I had left was the ATM on the gas pump itself. So I knew I wanted a screen or some buttons for this, but I also knew the camera wasn't gonna be up close. So the way I decided to do it was to create a master texture in Photoshop by grabbing a bunch of pictures of buttons, you know, phone booths and all these sorts of things. Chuck that in Photoshop to create a master texture, then use that for a material um, on the gas pump and then I went in on each little button that I modeled on the gas pump pressed U UV project So I just got a little thing that I could drag around and move in the UVs for the object I just chuck that on some button leave it like that and then use the image as an emission and yeah That was basically it. Oh and quickly I should mention the lighting for the scene was actually quite simple The scene was being lit by the gas station lights and by an extra area light in the middle that I used to augment that lighting so after an hour about 14 15 hours of work i had most of the gas station textured and modeled and i wanted to get on to making the rest of the scene making it fit in with the story of the short film so and i grabbed in my road asset from my other scenes uh put in the mountains in the background the grass uh street lights all of that and i uh, started to have a really nice looking scene but yeah basically at this point i had everything done i had everything in the background the car was animated rolling in i had a little bit of wobble to the car body just by adding a couple of keyframes to rotation um, but something didn't look right. It looked too clean. So before I rushed ahead and pressed render, I just gave myself a second to look at it. And I realized I needed some more rubbish. I needed some more detail to tell a story. So I uh, just started dragging and dropping assets from my asset browser, added a couple of weeds from William Langrid's Patreon, a couple of pieces of trash from my add-on Trashed. And then I just started moving things around. I originally had the, like, the broom, the squeegee brush in the bin where it's supposed to be, but then I thought no one was gonna leave it there. So I just chucked them around, uh, pulled vertices down on the concrete, made that go up and down. And yeah, just made things look not so perfect. You know, I made the fuel hose not sit in the thing, like someone's just left it on the ground. So yeah, that really added to giving the image a lot more character and it was the final touch the render needed. Oh, and yeah, I added in some moths uh, flying around the lights following Ian Hubert's like lazy tutorials because you know, Moths always add extra realism. So, with all of that out of the way, it was time to render. After 10 hours of rendering, the animation was done, but there was still that little bit of special source that I added in After Effects, with a little bit of color correction, grain, blurring, sharpening, all that nice stuff to give it that crispy look. If you want more of an in-depth explanation of my compositing, uh, make sure to check out my Patreon. I also have a video on that as well. So yeah, finally, after all of that, we have the final animation with music and sound. So here it is. Wow. That was a lot. I look back on this scene now and I realize I learned a lot making this. And hopefully you guys learned a lot from watching this video. And even though this video was packed full of information, there are still more things I just couldn't fit into this quick YouTube tutorial. So if you guys want a more in-depth explanation of this scene and all the other scenes from nowhere and access to the all the assets I created for this shot, make sure to check out my Patreon. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel. And uh, yeah, keep going with Blender. You got this.